Hi, thank you for joining me on this video where we will be dissecting an eye of a cow. It gives us a good model of the same structures that we can see in a human eye. And we should start by examining the external structures. Note the thick layer of adipose tissue. This serves as a cushioning around the eye, protecting it, filling spaces, and so on. Let's start by removing some of this fatty tissue. We can also see attachment points of several extrinsic muscles. Remember, these helped us to move the eye wherever we desire to look. As you might recall from our discussion in the lecture video, it was cranial nerves 3, 4 and 6 that supplied these. Let's see if we can find our optic nerve. Remember, this was our second cranial nerve. To expose more of it, we need to remove some further adipose tissue. And also muscle tissue. and some conjunctiva. Do you remember what that was? Well, it is the mucous membrane that covers the front of the eye and lines also the inside of the eyelids.
What else can we remove here? Sclera. Sclera was the sclera was the white part of the eye surrounding the cornea. So we can remove some remains of that too. In fact, sclera forms more than 80% of the surface area of the eyeball, extending all the way from cornea to the optic nerve. So although we cannot see much of it on an eye in situ, there is much more of it here when we do not typically see. We can also see cornea, of course. Cornea was the front surface of an eye. Typically it would be clear, but it often happens in these specimens that it becomes cloudy over time and storage. This structure lies directly in front of the iris and pupil and allows the light to enter into an eye. Okay. Now we have trimmed away most of the fat and connective tissue. The optic nerve is still intact nicely here. Now comes some skills parts. We are called, going to hold the eye with cornea facing downwards and carefully make an incision into the sclera a little above the cornea. Then we can use scissors to cut around the eyeball. we can follow the line of cornea's edge. Now we can see inside of the eye. Let's start by examining the anterior part. Here 
we can find ciliary body, which is the black pigmented body that appears in a halo encircling the lens. We can also see the lens. This biconvex structure is opaque in preserved specimens, but really clear in a living. It might be sometimes possible to see suspensory ligaments. And these would be located around these were the delicate fibers that attached the lens to the ciliary body. Okay, now we can carefully remove the lens and identify some adjacent structures. We can see iris, which is continuation of the ciliary body on the anterior surface. And it is penetrated by the pupil. Here. Also note the cornea. This, as we saw earlier, the more convex anterior most portion of the sclera. Remember how we saw it from the exterior investigation of the eyeball. Again, this would normally be transparent, but becomes cloudy in the preserved specimens. Finally, let's examine the posterior portion of the eyeball. We can remove some of the vitreous body, vitreous humor. This is the transparent gelatin-like inconsistency. Let's identify a few more structures. We have retina. Here the neural layer may appear as a delicate whitish, little crumbled membrane that separates easily from the pigmented coral. This pigmented vascular of the eyeball 
you will see that it appears in this beautiful color or mixture of colors in this kawaii because of a special reflecting surface. This surface reflects the light within the eye and is only found in animals who deal with low intensity lights. It's not found in humans. So, that concludes our investigation of the cow eye. Thank you for having joined me on this video.